Get your indie fix at SorgatronMedia.com slash store. Get $3 off any digital download with coupon code STOKEMONKEY. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at SorgatronMedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back again. The Indie Mayhem Show, uh, Episode 5, Sorgatron. Mike Sorg here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to get going again. Uh, and thanks, uh, as usual, uh, to Basic Sickness, BasicSickness.com uh, for that intro music, that awesome intro music. So go check that out. Um, of course, uh, with me, as usual, from uh, the Texas, San Antonio, can't remember what town he's usually in, Eamon Payton. It is San Antonio. Aim Payton. Aim Payton. Aim Payton. He's the announcer uh, down there for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, and, of course, I have my part here helping out with production for International Wrestling Cartel and Renegade Wrestling Alliance up here in Pittsburgh. And uh, and it's another project, actually, I'm going to be involved with this weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. It's going to get a little bit extreme. Uh, it's going to be a little bit extreme here, Aim, because we have a guest on the show that uh, he, he's been a longtime Mayhem guest. But on and on, oh he's been on a few times. <laughs> I know. Just a few. Just a, just a, but every time he's on, he makes an impression. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, with us uh, this week is a friend of the show, uh, freshly fle- freshly cleansed, because I know we'll probably get dirty on this podcast, um, a friend from here in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, for the uh, IWC International Wrestling Cartel, is Chess Flexor. There he is. I think Hello. You're, you're our first shirtless guest, I think, on the show. <laughs> I'm more than shirtless, pal. Oh, God. hey <laughs> I, I got to say, do you make sure you're freshly showered for all of your interviews? No, just you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You're very special. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, well, first, uh, first time since uh, uh, you, you, we haven't had you on the show for a good while, and I think uh, uh, some big news. Uh, you're currently uh, a tag team champion here in uh, IWC locally. I am. I am. I actually have the tag team championship belt right here. Let me go get it. Oh boy! Oh, here we go. <laughs> we are streaming live. I'll remind you. <laughs> is it going on the internet? Any? There he is. And there, oh, there's the belt. Wildcats. Wildcats. That's a wildcat <laughs> specialty right there. Awesome. Awesome. So, so how's it feel? This is your first. Uh, you, how long have you been with IWC? Shucks. Uh, I've been a trainee with IWC since 2004, three, four. Oh, wow. I could tell you in a second if you give me a moment. But for a long time, 10 years ish. Okay. Okay. And I, and you're one of those guys. I know. I know. Especially with IWC, you're one of those guys. I, I remember always seeing in the back. Uh, you know, before we saw you wrestling. Um, like, you know, as a trainee, and you're always you like you're always there every show, uh, helping out some of the new guys and everything. Um, uh, what what can you attribute to having uh, stuck around with uh, the cartel this long? <laughs> well, it's because um, apparently. No large company that's on television or pay-per-view wants to sign me away. <laughs> but I, I love the place. It's fun. It's exciting. There's always fresh faces coming in, and you've got your guys that are there for the long haul. That It's not a bad thing. They're, they're good at what they do, and they love IWC just like the rest of us. It's fun. Good times. Definitely. Uh, tell us about. Um, I, I know I've been uh, in in helping. Uh, you know, on my side of things. Um, I mean, I still kind of consider myself a, kind of a fan of the product you guys are putting out over there, even though we're 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 you know putting cameras to it. Uh, but I have gotten a kick out of the last. Jeez, uh, oh, was it six months or so. You guys have been doing sexually sexy, sexy talented dudes, the STDs. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the group that you've uh, kind of put together there? Well, it consists of myself, Chess Flexor, Ginger, Andrew Palace, Brian McDowell, Corey Futuristic, and there are also a few others that, I mean, they're not in front of the cameras part of the group, but they're behind the scenes part of the group. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of STDs going around. <laughs> so what is it What is it about uh, the guys in this group that really kind of make you, you gel? 
I, I know it's like 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 it seems it seems like you guys pretty much roll together, right? Because I know I've seen you as a group, uh, you know, out at Denny's after the show and everything. Is, is that what you guys attribute to uh, kind of that, you know, how you guys gel? Well, it's it's, it's really more of like uh, we circulate around this one chick named Bianca just because of the pure spectacle that she is. But we do get along. We're friends. Um, Andrew Palace and myself for tag teams elsewhere is Froflex. Uh, Brian McDowell and I, we've hung out. We FaceTime almost every morning. He wakes me up to the sounds of my iPad going off. Corey Futuristic, he's he's been around for longer than either of those two. And he and I have just, we've become real good friends. And his brother, King Frown, mm -hmm. his CD is in my car constantly. He, he, you know, no I lie. I, I share that actually. Uh, I believe the King Frown CD is still in the back of my car as well. But yeah, we're all uh, we're all really good friends. There's enormous amount of crazy antics that happen just in our personal lives that should be recorded. Which some things are recorded. There's been two food eating contests between Andrew and Brian, and they're just spectacular. Those need to be seen. Uh, we've gone out to eat together. Like you said, you've seen us out to eat before, but we go to this place called sauce every once in a while. And they have this Mac and cheese challenge where there's, uh, it's loaded macaroni and cheese. I think five pounds of it or like two and a half pounds, macaroni, two and a half pounds, other stuff. Andrew palace. He is not won the, the contest yet of eating it, but he has gotten further than any other man. He's eaten over half of it. And we have the video footage of that. We have, we've hung out countless times. We've had some scary situations, but when we when we get in front of the crowd, when we're in the ring, that's when that's when we really like to shine. We show off what uh, the sexy, talented dudes are all about. Awesome. Yeah, and there definitely seems to be, uh, uh, like I said, a pretty good gel. Like the just the brainstorming that goes on between you guys uh is pretty i've had the opportunity to witness um excellent uh so uh you're also uh i know involved uh i've seen you training some of the newbies coming up so you know some of these guys like like a lot of guys you're hanging with now uh uh you know in the ring uh can you tell us a little bit about uh you know being able to be involved in the the, the helping with the name here is the iron city wrestling academy is the full name for iwc school correct yes Yes, it is. So can you tell me a little bit about that, uh, uh, be able to get back to that? Uh, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like a curiosity I have just to see how the trainees are doing and to watch them learn. It's like whenever I started learning, it was my main trainers were Glenn Spector and Shirley Doe. Mm -hmm. Stupor Hentai, Hentai just gave up uh, being a main trainer, but he was still down there all the time. But like technically he wasn't the main trainer it was Shirley Doe and Glenn Spector, but there was also Dean Radford. All the guys from the other classes that came before us were down there all the time. Uh, people came in and out just like now I'll come in and out. And I know even like Andrew Palace, he's still young, he's still fresh, but he's down there getting in the ring and wrestling with these new guys just to give, just to let them wrestle someone who's been in the ring for like two years now. But I, I like to go down there. I, don't know if they learn anything from me i like to think i'm teaching them something but uh it's fun it's a uh, good this it's it's a good experience to see how what they're going through in their training and the struggles that they're having the way they're progressing mm -hmm. awesome um so you've been on like i said we've been you've been on the road for for a while here when wrestling uh you've had some pretty interesting situations you've gotten yourself in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Million Dollar Man? I, I don't think we've talked about this on the show before from a few years ago at Night of Legends. Definitely one, of, probably one of my favorite chess flexor moments. <clears throat> well, everyone knows who the Million Dollar Man is, Ted DiBiase. And he was coming to... I don't know if he, I say manage, but he was going to lead this group of IWC wrestlers and they were going to take on what some might call the bad guys. 
And I took the opportunity, the money that I've made, I counted it all up. And not only do I have millions of dollars, well, did I had billions of dollars and that gave me the rightful title of being called the billion dollar man. So I went and I talked to the, the what's it called? The HNIC. And I called, uh, I called him up and I said, listen, you're letting the million dollar man uh, be the personal leader of these good guys. I'm going to be the billion dollar man and be the personal leader of these bad guys. And obviously, since we have more money, they don't have a shot at beating us. I mean, it's clear, it's clear math. I mean, it's greater than less than, and we had greater than. <laughs> Awesome, uh, but of course that didn't go so well. Uh, you, uh, would, but uh, but you got to uh, actually uh, uh, get involved with Ted DiBiase in the ring. Well, uh, that whole story goes after they cheated, after they won. Of course, of course. You know Virgil. <laughs> Can't trust him. We've well, learned that. We all know Virgil. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I let Ted DiBiase have a piece of my mind. I told him that. He should just I, – I told him that I knew he was going around saying goodbye to all his fans, one last hurrah, but now his time's over, and he needs to step aside. And do you know what that Virgil did? Hmm. That Virgil was behind me, and he distracted me, and the Ted DiBiase put me in the million-dollar dream. And do you know what else Virgil did after I got – put to sleep by the million dollar dream after Ted DiBiase stuffed a hundred dollar bill in my mouth. Virgil took that hundred dollar bill. <laughs> of course. As oh, Virgil, Virgil never to be trusted. Awesome. Um, so, so tell me uh, how, what, what got you into wrestling? Um, you know, what, what was your earliest kind of thought of, uh, you know, uh, where wrestling kind of took hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> is that a bad way to put that <laughs> uh no I've, I've just watched it forever i remember having um my rowdy roddy piper toy my figure and i was in church and i lost his kilt and i wouldn't let my mother leave church until i found it which never happened and tantrums might have been thrown by a lesser person than myself because I wouldn't do that. But we looked all around this church and uh, that was the last I ever saw of his kilt until my mother shows up with this handmade kilt and Rowdy Roddy Piper and I didn't want anything to do with that. So we threw it on the ground and stomped or somebody, oh, <laughs> somebody of lesser class than myself would have threw it on the ground and stomped on it not not myself though i was gonna say your mom is a nice person i get to see her at the dvd table most uh, iwc shows yeah she's nice and then she comes with this half-assed half-assed kilt <laughs> that she wants me to put on my roddy piper toy awesome <laughs> excellent so when did that turn into like like where we're talking like well, wait, 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 we're talking LJN era uh, Roddy Piper here? That was. I think it was actually like a, um, I don't know if it was my older brothers or somebody. Uh, we used to have this great aunt that we would go over her house and she'd just pull out boxes of old toys and matchbox cars. And every time we left there, we'd leave with one. Not that we stole it, but she'd be like, oh, here, take this. She actually lived by the uh, Mayhem Studios up there. Oh, okay. Up by uh, Pauline Park or whatever. Not Pauline Park. Coast Park or whatever. I used to live on Pauline. Mm. Whatever the hell that's, that park is that has like three levels. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Next subject. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> Next subject. So at what point did you decide, hey, maybe I can do this? I don't know. That's questionable. You could ask anybody if they think I could actually do it now and have to. Let's presume that, that you're successfully doing this. I mean, you do have a belt, a wild cut belt. Ooh, that's true. I am. That you have right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding it. But anyway, um, 
it's really been something I've always wanted to do. I've always, I've always loved it. And, uh, just like anything you love, it causes you lots of pain and suffering. But in the end, it's, it's well worth it. <laughs> I think really every, every, I don't know if I could say ever since I remember, like, it's not like I came out the womb and putting on a pair of tights, but uh, I remember in kindergarten, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and we had to draw some freaking deal, and I drew a, uh, like, a, a police officer, but I think you had to, like, there was, like, pre-cut-out paper, and it was either, like, a cop, a fireman, or something, and then after that, I wanted to be a chef, which I'm a pretty good cook, and uh, so I accomplished that. And then I wanted to wrestle, so awesome. that's done. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I guess <laughs> continue wrestling and cooking things and abiding by the law. <laughs> <laughs> you got the basis for everything, right? Right. And I'm just wandering around, by the way. So if the screen goes black, that's not because Sorgatron Media is screwing up. That's that's me. <laughs> It's all right. It's, it's, it's making the, the video interesting here. Um, excellent. Uh, oh. So so one thing we've been doing lately, uh, because we've noticed some people have a, some pretty strong opinions one way and the other. Uh, uh, tell us, uh, you know, what is, uh, you know, kind of the greatest thing about what you're doing with indie wrestling uh, and kind of what's the worst part about you know, being an indie wrestler and, and, you know, things you're seeing out there in the business and the places you're working. The best part would probably be a little bit of this. Oh, geez. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to have to edit that. Well, now. No, the, <laughs> the best part for me personally is probably all the fun that I have from the the whole package uh like traveling to the different places just hanging out in the locker room mm -hmm. going out there and seeing the variety of fans that come out and to see these events and it's 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 very interesting it's very fun meeting all kinds of interesting strange weird crazy people <laughs> Uh, getting to do stuff like this. Um, I guess th th we do get paid. The money is, it's, it's better to get paid than not get paid. Mm -hmm. So whenever you end up with money in your hand, that's good too. Um, the bad is probably the, the bad. Um, it depends. The bad, I'm sure, is going to be like a lot of the same answers, but let's go through three bad things. Places that don't have showers, and then you can't shower, and then you have to drive home an hour or two hours or eight hours from North Carolina in a van full of other people that haven't showered after they wrestled. That's not too fun. <laughs> That's like that's like a lot of places I know I've been to, right? <laughs> like I, I right. just think about some of the venues. Like obviously, Core Time has to have a great, pretty good facility for you guys for IWC, but Clearfield, no, no. That's when you, that's when you go down the road to the sheets, and then uh, you go in the bathroom and do the the old whore's bath technique. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's bad. Another thing that's bad is um, shit. Shocks. I mean, I mean, there's a lot. Um, bad that I see. B bad people with bad attitudes. This is like Family Feud. Is that what it's called with the with the gimmicks on the? Mm. On the the screen yeah yeah <laughs> everything people with bad attitudes there's there's a good bit of people with bad attitudes in this business and it's not like the the 
asshole who's an asshole because he's better than everybody else and it's okay for him to be an asshole because he's not worried about the little guys he's going places that's fine there's those kind of assholes but then there's the people with bad attitude assholes that that i just don't understand what if it's if they get such if they're if they're such if if they're so unhappy with the way things are going or the situations then why not just remove yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it it does seem like a lot of guys in indie wrestling seem to get a i want to say a chip on their shoulder but but like there's a point where it seems like a lot of guys just don't enjoy it anymore and you wonder why they still do it is it is it maybe just they don't know anything else to do um is that is that a fair assessment of that Everybody knows other things to do. I mean, I could I could twiddle my thumbs if I wanted to. Yeah. I could, mm. I could go rape people if that's what I wanted to do to make me happy. Anybody could do something else. Do whatever makes you happy. That's what I say. Do what mm. makes you happy. And if it doesn't make you happy, then just stop doing it. Mm. Like, I'm not – I mean, I could stab myself in the arm, and if it doesn't make me happy, all I have to do is stop. <laughs> Some people think that me stabbing myself in the arm makes me happy, though. That's why I do it a lot. Of times. Yeah, I, I remember the fifth anniversary show for Mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. See, what you don't know is, like, the multiple times we're out and, like, uh, maybe after a Black Diamond event, we go to the Quaker State up in uh, the Cabela's or wherever that place is out in West Virginia. Or oh, yeah. That. Yeah, Cabela's, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a, like a Quaker steak out there, and one time it was there was a bunch of us, like the STDs minus Brian, uh, Remy Levey was out there, I believe, a bunch of us. There was, I think Cupid ended up showing up with his brother, but we were sitting there, and I just had a knife in my hand, and I started like hacking away at my neck with it, and I started bleeding, and I was the only one laughing. Everybody else was like staring at me, like what the heck are you doing? You know? Just having fun. Everybody stare. Everybody stare at Chess Lexor. <laughs> so, so, so you, you, you're, you're one that likes the attention. I've trust me. I've done <laughs> a lot of things that probably a lot of people wouldn't do. I don't know if it's all for the attention, but it definitely gets attention. Mm. It's all for the attention. <laughs> Awesome. Um, like I say, you've been around for a while. Uh, is there what's the what's the craziest thing you've seen out there on the road? <laughs> the craziest thing I've seen on the road. In what sense? Um, hmm. I've seen people take showers in car washes. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I've seen that, that, that's the second alternative to uh, to when they don't have showers in the uh, in the venues. <laughs> I've seen dead baby birds. I've seen helicopters land in the middle of the highway and hold us up on traffic for like an extra forty five minutes. I've seen um, I've seen lots of things. I mean, this is just stuff I feel comfortable telling you. <laughs> I mean, I could t- I, I'll. Sorry, I'll tell you something. If you remind me, I'll tell you something that I can't say on here at all. But there's some interesting stories you should hear. Oh, jeez. Um, what have I seen that's crazy? We went down to North Carolina one time, and they were having a Easter egg hunt, and the Easter Bunny was going to be there. It's in. We pull up, and it's in this big warehouse. Uh, garage is on either end so now it's like open up walk through these kids are walking in and out there's a ring in there they're looking for these eggs and uh, it's the blue collar slaughter me Andrew Brian uh, I think Corey was there that time Hayden Farah Remy LeVay I don't know there was two or three times we went down there with a big van. So there was some of those people in it. But anyway, we go there and there's the, there's these kids running around looking for eggs. And then there's 
the Easter Bunny shows up and he's hopping around and they end up like capturing him and holding him down and the main uh, hero of that promotion is out there with the Easter Bunny and a unicorn comes running along. It might sound like I'm just making nonsense up and rambling, but this is just stuff that happened when we were down there. Or it's a Chikara's show. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and then the fire marshal got called, and we didn't wrestle. Oh. And we all the way back home. Um, I, Easter Bunny actually reminded of this, uh, and I, I found a little bit of video for you guys on the video version of this. I have to ask about, uh, you always have the most interesting ring gear. Uh, I have up here the, I want to say this is the lamb outfit. I... Yeah, yeah, well, here. Give me, give me like 10 seconds and we'll walk up to my, where I keep all of my, my stuff. Oh, do you, you, so this is all in a, of course this is all in a closet. <laughs> More like drawers. My robes and my my ring jacket are in a closet with uh, ginger stuff, and my mm-hmm. tights are in a drawer. Well, two drawers. <clears throat> Turn on. Mine. So, so, so the one I'm looking at, it looks like kind of a fluffy. Like, again, I want to call it like a, a sheep. I want to almost call it a sheepskin outfit. Uh, I remember the first time you wore this in IWC, and like parts of it were falling out. Yeah. Um, actually, the first time I wore that, I think I wrestled Corey Futuristic in his first match. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's there was. There's a lot of times where I leave a lot of excess stuff in the ring. Like, all right, let me see the gimmick here. Turn this. Okay. So. I see some some looks like maybe some leopard skin. Let me turn it. Well, actually, that's 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 like a a shoot for a coat. There's, okay. There's a. There's a story that goes behind this deal. That's like the um, real old uh, generation pass down deal for Ginger. But we have, let's see what we have here. The fans can see this. This is from Clearfield, the uh, muscle worshiping ceremony. Yes, yes. <laughs> With uh, Jimmy DeMarco. Was it, uh, that was the introduction of the dragon, wasn't it? Yes, that's actually downstairs. Here's the mil- or billion dollar man. Billion dollar man. Yep. Uh, robe Notice here. The set signs. And then that was that was uh, that was dead on. That's why I bring up the million dollar man thing because I always remember that was like the best like dead on. Like you had his suit, of course, with your own scent sign because it was better for the billion dollar man. Suit jackets in here somewhere. Hold on, wait. There wait, you go. Wait. Oh, there it is. It's dark. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull it out. <laughs> Bam. Wait. Focus. There you go. I don't know if you've seen that, Eamon, but that's that's pretty slick. Right Very there. nice. Like high that. quality. Yeah, there it is. That. Um, we should just do like a Cribs deal. <laughs> <laughs> Here. It's not too... Another gimmick or outfit. Robes. So where does the inspiration come for a lot of these? Like, they're, 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 do you just like go to a, a, a fabric store and say, "I want something with this"? Oh no, no. Well, we find it, and then I make Ginger sit in front of her sewing machines at the sewing table. This is okay. this is where this is where all chest flexors, well, most of chest flexors tights are. Made. Nice. Oh, Lucy's waking up. <laughs> Let's wake up the bird. <laughs> I know you're supposed to be sleeping. Don't yell at me. Yell at the mayhem. Indie mayhem. <laughs> Hold on. It's dark. The inside, the, inside the lives and the inner workings of Chess Lexar. Hello. Hello. Come here, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> Come here, Lucy. No, I know. You want to go back to bed. We're bothering you. You can't really see her too well, but. Oh, we got her over here. The Alexandrian parrot of ginger and chest flexor. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, now, one last thing before we. Okay, Lucy, shut your speak. 
Um, so this is where the wrestling tights and excess fabric. As you can see, I keep them nice and neat. <laughs> Here, I just threw this on Twitter. This was for the one of those AIW Girls Night Out events, I believe, or something. Yeah. This is right after the big Casey Anthony deal. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the chloroform university with the chloroform symbol, like the, the science gimmick there. Wow. Uh, so we have one drawer two drawers that this doesn't even want to open up here's actually my pink furry deal here's the here's the here's the here's the here's the here's the <laughs> gotta keep this one in a bag because it gets fur everywhere so that's the fur from the uh the uh the lamb suit i guess you can call it yes and then there's just random Random fabric, more random fabric, more random fabric. So, 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 fabric. what is what is the thinking going into some of these outfits that you come up with, or I guess collectively come up with? Um, sometimes I have ideas. Sometimes I just say go to town, and sometimes it's a collaboration. But it's really not too thought out. Hmm. I mean, it's more of a, I need to wrestle tight for the next event. I'm busy. Damn it, I said make me new wrestling tights. <laughs> <laughs> and we're showing off, uh, we got your Twitter up here with the Casey Anthony one. Good night. Good night. <laughs> you can see Lucy saying good night to all you out there in Mayhem World. And, but yeah, the, the, so I... It's interesting. I, I to put you you and Ginger obviously put a lot into actually making the gear as opposed to going through another source to actually to uh, develop it. Ginger, what? How do you feel about making wrestling tights for chest flexor? Um, it's an ongoing job. <laughs> you weren't sleeping, were you? I was kind of sleeping. Oh. Lucy's, Lucy's I know. Alive. I hear Lucy. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, Chest, uh, we'll let you go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? These are roses from Steven Singer. I hate stevensinger.com. Oh, free advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a... Oh, wait, let me take them out without busting up her stuff. These are for Valentine's Day this year that I got her, even though it's not Valentine's Day yet. They came, and I. This one is a. Let me see the best lighting to show this. A. Uh, rose dipped in, or it's um out like it's got gold. You can't really see it too well. She has pictures of it up on her Facebook. But this is a gold tipped rose, I guess you call it, with the stem dipped in gold, and then it's got the leaf outline and the petal outline with gold. And then this other one is the platinum one. Real, real roses. Platinum gimmick air. So if you want to be nice, go get your ladies some some roses from Steven Singer. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Chess Flex, or do you want to, uh, is there anything you want to let the people go with? Anything coming up you want to plug? Uh, yes. Yes, obviously. I'm only here to plug things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this Friday is AIW up in Cleveland at Turner's Hall. It's TGIF. And then this Saturday, I believe you'll be talking about this Saturday. I'm plugging this for Andrew Palace because Andrew Palace will be on the pre-show for Extreme Rising. Nice. Very awesome. And he will be wrestling for the Bar Jitsu Championship against Michael Blade, I believe. 
so the, so the STBs will be definitely well represented at uh, Extreme Rising. Mm-hmm. And Sunday, Andrew Palace and myself as Froflex will be wrestling at Black Diamond Wrestling, Aces Wild, at the Eagles in Wheeling. There you go. Very cool. So and, yeah. then, and then, <laughs> and then on the twenty second, there's going to be IWC. We'll be defending our titles against the Founding Fathers successfully. I hope. Brian McDowell, the Bowler, and I will be defending our titles. And Andrew Palace is going to be wrestling Greg Iron in a return match from Clearfield. If anybody remembers that one, and there will be a battle royal with myself, and I think the rest of the guys might be in it. I don't know, because I don't really pay attention that much, but you can check out the website to see. Uh, and I believe that's all my plugs for now, besides go to my YouTube page and Snapchat me, and you could Google Hangout me, or if you're like B-Rax, you could Uvu me. 30 times an hour, every hour, or you could Facebook and MySpace, which I'd still go on MySpace and Twitter and all that stuff. I don't know why the other STDs weren't on this hangout. It's (laughs) pathetic. They should be here. Maybe next time we'll all cram in the studio. There you go. There you go. When it's not like snowing in incredibly out. Well, thank you, uh, Chess Flexor, for this very revealing look. (laughs) <laughs> you want to see it? No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no off shot, off shot. Oh, no. Oh, no. That, that already got out blueified yeah. before, so. Screw Mother Nature. Screw the weather. I should have been there. We should have been there. We'll have Next to set time, up. it'll we'll... be better. Or you'll have to bring the studio here. Me, Lucy, all the fabric. <laughs> We can have a fashion show. I'll be a first Indie Mayhem fashion show. Thank you, Tex- Chess Flexor. You're welcome, Tex Flexor. That's Tex another... Flexor. There you go. Maybe if you get down to Eamon's neck, neck of the woods, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. I love you. Oh, fond of you too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eamon, with that, uh, a great interview there with Chess Flexor. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to, be, the, 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 to get so much behind the scenes there. No, yeah, we got we got inside. In, oh, this is inside the actor studio, but <laughs> even more line. inside. <laughs> <laughs> He's still on the line walking through his house. <laughs> well, then. Uh, so we have so other then, stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's stuff. Uh, uh, I guess we can discuss a lot of stuff happening in the indie wrestling world. Uh, I know there's something that you wanted to discuss, Sorgatron, uh, about the stuff that's been happening, the stuff that happened this weekend. Yes. Uh, for a, for a big event that happened this past weekend, and that is National Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Wrestling uh, Day. National Pro Wrestling Day in Easton, Pennsylvania. Uh, you, For those that checked it out on iPay-Per-View or those that were there or the, those that can go back and watch it because it's still available on YouTube.com slash wrestling is. Uh, looked like an amazing crowd in Easton. A lot of people packed uh, the Easton Funplex to go check out that event. Uh, great card top to bottom. Uh, some really interesting stuff all around. And some big developments. Uh, looks like we're getting our Chikara back. You're getting your looks Chikara like back. Our Chikara. I don't it's know what the heck Chikara. happened there. Uh, no, yeah, I watched this um, uh, in po- I watched this Monday kind of while I was working here, so I could kind of catch up a little bit. Um, looked like a pretty good show, pretty crazy show. Um, uh, so well represented. Uh, great to see uh, the guy from Smart Mark Video. Uh, Mike Burns. Mike uh, Burns. It, it's, it's, it's actually Smart been Mark funny because I've, I've been uh, we've been connecting, trying to get IWC stuff on there uh, over the last few weeks. So it's great to put a face to the name. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations to him uh, over at Smart Mark Video. Um, Being awarded the uh, Ambassador of Indie Wrestling Award that was awarded to uh, Cole Cabana last year. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, it was, well, last year it was a great. Uh, Bill After actually gave it to Cole Cabana, so Cole came and and presented the next one. So it was kind of cool that they got to do the trade off. Uh, you can. It's definitely a different flavor. I mean, it definitely felt more and more as a, uh, a particular Chikara wrestling is type of show. We had a um, lot of like build up feuds to the whole stuff that's been going on. In the wrestling is yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, definitely, definitely more based off of that uh, mm-hmm. that 
department, I guess you could say. I mean, make no mistake. It, it, make, make no mistake. It was definitely last year. It, there was definitely a lot. I would say like sixty percent of the matches were representing some that wrestling is or Jakara related thing, or at least not too far off from it. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, so it, it was still very, very Jakara based. But it was really nice that they did loop in some other guys like our local IWC, like Ring of Honor, and everything like that. So it was still a great day for just like loving professional wrestling and say, hey, let's at least have a day of appreciation. I like that they did make it, uh, uh, you know, a, a charity event uh, mm-hmm. for the Against the Malaria Foundation. They did meet their goal of over $5,000. Let me see, because I, I think you can still donate. Let me see where that, that uh, uh, level is at this time. Uh, they're actually up uh, around $7,700. So, That's so awesome. well beyond their goal. And, and I imagine they would be with as many people that's probably interested in this event. Really cool they did on YouTube. Uh, on a technical side, it looks like they probably used the YouTube live event system uh which yeah. we've been experimenting with actually if i if i did this right uh we should be actually broadcasting this right now on youtube uh from to my personal account I'm just kind of experimenting with it tonight hi youtube see how it comes out hi youtube people <laughs> that you are probably not watching some of you yet. are really nice and some of you aren't to me <laughs> <laughs> exactly you have a lot of friends on youtube from the tna oh, after I do. show um but of course so so it was weird to watch back and i don't know how much of what you you watch it live right uh, yeah, live through the stream, and there were uh, there was like s- short, like sort of stuttering, like yeah. buffering, I guess you could say. But uh, like it was the point where like you could have moved it back like thirty seconds, and you and would be fine. The whole way now, I know watching the stream back, there are just gaps missing. Yeah, there are a couple gaps. And at one point, they do mention, "Hey, we're back. We have some technical issues." Blah blah blah. But again, it's free. You can't complain. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just kind of, eh, you know. Um, I know. I wouldn't use it next time. I think they used well last year at National Pro Wrestling Day when they did the iPay Review. They used the Smart Mark Video on Demand uh, service. Yeah, uh, which did prove to be, I think, a bit better. I feel like that, and I feel and this is a new technology. Um, right. with, with YouTube, I feel like um, they might have been doing the YouTube thing as a partial experiment to see if maybe that might be something they'd do in the future because um mm-hmm. I, i'm sure smart mark is probably behind the production as they usually are i don't know how all that uh, entirely works with them um but it seemed like the same kind of video people from what i saw and of course you know you know the smart mark guy was there and everything they have a close relationship with shikara um but no i think it was a very successful event it did what it needed to do it just what you've been expecting with shikara coming back um it was probably fun in person and i know uh leg kick uh jessica uh, was actually there mm-hmm. our friend from alabama uh and she i knew i knew a lot of great contingent of people there uh brandon stroud who, yeah uh, brandon stroud i show. actually I heard brandon stroud actually mentioned on the commentary i believe um, yeah bryce renberg dropped his name because yeah. bryce renberg is a great guy <laughs> he is he is he's awesome uh so so we got a little bit of insight there i know i know jessica got got uh i want to call it attack hugged by maria yeah, <laughs> Maria, the hostess for the evening. Very excited uh, that Jess donated to Against Malaria. Um, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but no, I think it was a, a, a great event for what it was. Uh, yeah, you definitely get some more people excited about uh, what Chikar is doing and everything. There's, like I said, very good representation. There was a, a big, uh, was it a 10-man tag at the end? There's a trios match with a mm-hmm. lot of really interesting characters. What was the, the Baltic... The Baltic, uh, the Baltic Siege. Siege, which is composed of the uh, Estonian Thunderfrog, Latvian Proud Oak, and Lithuanian Snow Troll. And yes, um, these are ridiculous characters. We ad- identify with this, but but it is fun. It is a blast. I love. Nothing to makes buy me happier it. than those guys and I don't, fucking I don't, most ice cream. I love and... pro wrestling that is a cartoon. Hmm. It's amazing. Is that, is that wrong? I mean, is, that a, is that a fair way to put that? It's it's a cartoon, and I mean, there's definitely a lot of serious stuff that goes into it. But I mean, I don't know. That's it's just happy and it's free and it's and it's just it makes you feel good. I think just it, people talk a lot about just like letting your cares go away and not thinking a lot in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, something I don't always agree with, but in Chikara and in this case, I definitely agree with it. Yeah. Um. Those. It's just you have to sit back and just watch and enjoy and 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 it's fun and and that's why I'm so happy that it's back. Because Chikara um, is is was coming up there to the point of being a top, really top uh, indie wrestling company, mm. um, and I'm glad they're back. I'm glad. Hopefully, they can get some more momentum going and 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 be Chikara again. 
Excellent, excellent. Um, so we'll see. So what does that lead into for Chikara? They are having an event in May? In May. I believe it's May 25th. And I believe you can get tickets for that event on ChikaraPro.com um, on their new revamped website. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that in particular and seeing what's happening there because it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um I want to see where it goes. I want to see if they can link in all the ties to whatever happened. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still a lot of questions that were st- – luckily, there was enough development. Um, there's still a lot of questions still unanswered, which means there's still a lot that they can still <laughs> develop of the story, also, which I think is good. Also, Jessica's in the chat room and says, uh, awkward times, and Mr. Azerbaijan is my everything. I love Mr. Azerbaijan. <laughs> Mr. Azerbaijan. Oh, oh, and even more important than any of that – uh, you know who helped uh, Chikara come back and stood by all the Chikara guys? Hmm. The Submission Squad. Yes! In front it... of the Indie Mayhem show, Gary J. Yes. In his owl mask, which is amazing. <laughs> it was great to see a friend of the show there on the pay-per-view. Or, uh, I not not the even a pay-per-view. Squad. Nobody paid for this. Uh, but yeah, yeah, great great to see that connection there. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm actually, uh, I kind of want to, uh, uh, dive into, I feel like it's kind of like comic books. I feel like this is going to be a good jumping on point for Chikara, right? Cause I mean, guys yeah. like you and, and, and Alex cars, uh, have been all, all, all over the Chikara. Uh, what, what was it? The, the, the Chikara army, uh, you know, Chikarmi. Yeah, the Ch- clever. <laughs> what, no, no, what was the other? Th- there's always been the Chikarmi. Well, what did they call the the movement for bringing Chikara back? I, I can't recall. Oh, the whole I. I guess the whole I am Chikara. I am Chikara, movement, right? And say. there's even I know I saw an email. Hashtag. I, I saw an email where uh, if you were ever at any event and met Icarus and he gave you an I am Chikara shirt or something, they're actually going to let you in free to this first event as well. Very cool. So that's awesome. So so I mean they they they're a very great grassroots effort as far as the 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 fans there and I think they've gone to a really cool point by and being And there's people behind promotion. them. They sold out a thousand people at WrestleCon last year. That, yeah. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, that was a huge event. I, I was did not see the show, but I was on the other side of the curtain from the show and holy crap it sounded crazy. So uh <laughs> that was that was pretty cool. It was one of the last ones of the weekend and there was I think there might have been Ring of Honor there and Dragon Gate. Uh so I mean it was a Pretty, yeah, yeah, Shimmer as well. So it was a pretty, it was a pretty stacked uh, weekend of wrestling there. Um, kind of related to that. Can I bring up this other uh, uh, Honor Con that's coming up here? Yeah, I wanted to learn more about that. Uh, um, so I, I read, I read a little bit of the article. So this is going to be around. Um, and I thought I heard something about they were going to do. Maybe this is what they were talking about because I thought they were going to do their own con. They're not going to be part of Wrestle Con this year. What? Yeah, WrestleMania. there's um, the well, I th- the uh, Wrestle Con this year they have to change some stuff up. From what I know, it's very hard uh, to book in in Louisiana. Yeah, it sounds um, like we were talking. It, it sounds like that uh, WWE may be uh, shutting out all the re- other wrestling events that typically happen around the yeah, weekend. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I believe that will be for next year. They're oh, okay. For 30, they're, they're planning that for WrestleMania 31 to shut out um, the indie wrestling events, which I'm very sad about. Yeah. Um, I have opinions on that. I mean, I, I'm still, I would, nice. like we talked about last week, I was a big fan that Ring of Honor got to do a big show right down the street from where Royal Rumble was. Um, there's nothing, of, yeah. there's nothing really to stop them. It's just a great celebration of wrestling. Yes, they're kind of tacking on. Yes, but mm-hmm. there's nothing to stop them. You know, there are people I, there. They're, it's where you got. It's, you can't fault them. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, at no, all no, you can't. No, you that. can't. Um, I mean, be, I think it'd be different if TNA did it since they're a little closer. I mean, they're not really competition, yeah. but they are. You know, um, but no, Ring of Honor. That's like guerrilla marketing. That's that's great. You know, it's great for them to do that. And this is definitely a town where they're already doing shows, at least in the outskirts, because this is, uh, uh, you know, a net, uh, you know, one of the networks that carries them. Uh, you know, you're seeing it. You're in a San Antonio show. Yeah, we'll, I think we'll the, that. I think the biggest like thing with WrestleMania, and if we want to go more into this, the biggest thing with the whole idea of WrestleMania is that they always talk about how much it brings so much income and so much, you know, tourism to whatever area they're going to. Mm-hmm. These indie shows are a part of that. Exactly, they're a part of that. Whether they they're directly a part of that or they want it to be a part of that or not, they're a part of making that weekend so big. And it's a good weekend for like their guys. I mean, how many guys were involved with Wrestle? Con that were maybe even there for WWE access as well, or you know, not everybody, and... not every WWE legend can get the access. 
you know? They only have so mm-hmm. many probably coming in, and this kind of fills a gap for everybody else, you know? Uh, there's right. a fan base there, and I think the fan base is big enough that they're not going to stretch it too thin. WWE shouldn't be losing any money because because Honor Cons or Wrestle Cons are happening. But this Honor Con actually is not as I thought, going to be WrestleMania weekend. This is actually going to be the weekend of their anniversary show, I believe. Um, so okay. it's going to be Saturday, February 22nd. Um, and... Uh, I believe they, I thought they had some different, like, sort of events. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, this feels more, different... This feels kind of like the Chikara fan clave from, from uh, King of Trios weekend to me. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, I sort of lean more toward that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I like look, they have a schedule of events and it's like an arm wrestling tournament, photo and autograph signings for uh, two hours, fan photos with the R- uh, ROH entrance, ROH Q and A panel and announcement. Um, so it's like one to four there in uh, at the Pennsylvania National Arm- Guard Armory in Philadelphia, PA. I believe this uh, this show's running the uh, arena, isn't it? Is it the arena? I, I think it may be in one of the armories. I'm not positive. But is it, oh, maybe that's also have. Well, I guess they have everything awesome set up. That would make yeah. sense. So uh, you can go check that out. It's over at rohwrestling.com. Good for them. Like I, this looks like just kind of a fan fest thing for them. Um, I think they're getting to the point. They, you know, I know their audience is probably small. It is small. Fairly but, small. But it's a very rabid, you know. Mm. audience i think and i really think them getting to tv we talked about it i think the more maybe not wrestling fans but fans of wrestling um are getting into this and i think that's going to be I, I think this is really cool for them i, I don't expect oh, okay them. so so from what i can tell their uh their 12th anniversary event is the friday saturday is honor con and then right after the honor con is their tv taping oh i see okay okay all in all in uh philadelphia at the pennsylvania national guard armory okay. so so, and I know you have Ring of Honor coming up in your neck of the woods. According yes, to the counter on the weekend. website, in three hours, nineteen, three days, nineteen hours, twenty nine minutes, and thirty one seconds. Thirty, ah. twenty nine, twenty eight. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I'll just briefly talk about that. That will be a fun show. I will be there. Um, it'll be good to see um, a lot of people. There's a lot of people actually that weren't on uh, the last time they were in San Antonio, and mm-hmm. the first time they were in San Antonio. Um, uh, names like Kevin Steen, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, I know Tadarius Thomas is coming to team with ACH, which I think will be really cool. Uh, Ray Rose taking on BJ Whitmer, which I think will be very oh, interesting. Nice. nice. That should be really good. Um, there should be a lot of cool stuff. I'm excited for that show. Um, it should be very interesting. And I'll, I'll, I'm sure next week on uh, the Indie Mayhem show, I'll give you a. Uh, some stories or some talks about uh, the events. And we'll compare notes to the Pittsburgh showing. Since... Compare and contrast. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, that's sort of like the big discussions we had. Uh, I also want to mention a couple of indie wrestling events that are happening this weekend that I feel that you should check out. Uh, the first, uh, Chess Flexor mentioned it a bit earlier, but uh, AIW, Absolute Intense Wrestling, has an event Friday on the 7th in Turner's Hall in Cleveland, Ohio, entitled TGIF. Uh, that should be a very interesting show. Uh, really great like collection of talent, I think. Uh, the main event being Michael Elgin defending the uh, AIW Championship against Drake Younger, uh, which should be really fun. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff on that card. So um, if you're in the Cleveland, Ohio area, or if you want to get on DVD when it comes out on DVD, uh, definitely encourage you to check that out. Mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly's on the show. Uh, Vita Scott, like I said, Kevin Steen, uh, Eric Ryan, Rick Shane Page. Uh, great four-way here. Uh, Colin Delaney, Flip Kendrick, Matt Cross, Davey Vega, who I know, uh, you know you're know you a fan of. We had a, the playlist for him last week. Uh, mm-hmm. AIW always has a really good run of, of of people coming through a lot of ring of honor a lot of chikara people um a lot of just names in, in in indie wrestling and they have for years and it's great to see that they're doing that um so i mean really if you look at their roster and their match list for the last few years it's a it's a who's who's you know uh, uh you know as far as names coming through there and and a lot of people from your neck of the woods and mine so it's really yeah. cool to see like like all that world is seems to be coming together up there in cleveland for aiw so awesome what else you got uh, there's also a double shot event that's happening uh, this weekend. If you're a fan of Combat Zone Wrestling or if you're a fan of women's wrestling for Women's Superstars Uncensored, uh, they're having a weekend of, or I shouldn't say a weekend, uh, a night, a doubleheader 
of shows uh, at the Flyer Skate Zone in Voorhees, New Jersey. Uh, in the uh, afternoon will be WSU's Mutiny event, uh, which looks like a really stacked card, um, including the main event of Jessica Havoc defending her WSU championship against the uh, American debut of uh, Alpha Female from Germany. Uh, she has basically taken uh, the UK by storm. Um, <laughs> that is an odd video I pulled up. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, um. hey, oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah. uh, also, but that will be a long wit CZW, um, which will be holding their event in the evening, which actually looks like a really good show. Um, their 15 year anniversary show um, with the main event of Drew Gulak, uh, who we may talk about a bit later for our indie challenge, mm. uh, taking on AJ Styles. Um, which nice. would be really cool. Uh, and there's a lot of really cool uh, stuff on that card, actually. So um, you can get the iPay-Per-Views for those shows at Um I believe they made you a package deal like they did. Uh, I ordered a WSU CZW package deal before. Um, and it's, it's a, they're both really good shows. Um, CZW, I personally am becoming a bit more into now mm-hmm. uh, because I think they've grown beyond past years where it was – a lot of death match and a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, they have a lot of really good wrestling on that card. Um, and they've, they've been consistently delivering in the wrestling department. And I think the partnership with WSU is really good. Um, and WSU is delivering great stuff now that they're under beyond wrestling. Uh, they're bringing in a lot more talents that I think are sort of the level of talents that I think appeal to a mass audience that want to see good independent women's wrestling. Um, I think they're really being very, very smart and very uh, uh, appealing with their cards and with their talent. So I'm excited for that. That should be a really fun sh- uh, uh, two shows uh, that I hope you either order or you go to if you're in the Voorhees, New Jersey area. So go t- check all those indie uh, shows out and check any indie show that's in your area uh, because go, you know it helps support – Indie wrestling it helps po- support indie wrestlers, and that's what's all important. That's why we're here. Um, and I guess the last thing we can talk about here on the Indie Mayhem Show uh, is our Indie Challenge. Uh, first, let's talk, though, about our challenge from last week. Uh, like you, uh, uh, one second. What's it? We got one more. We actually have one more, sir. I, I'm sorry. We I didn't do have one notes, more. but we did reference before. Uh, actually, <laughs> there's uh, uh, Extreme Risings coming to Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, I, I'll be at ringside. Uh, <laughs> so say hi to Sorg. <laughs> so say hi to me. I'll probably be in your way. Because um, he's doing his job. Because I'm, I'm doing my job. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, not a production by, by us at Sorgatron Media, but uh, good friends, uh, guys that used to help with uh, Prime Wrestling. Uh, so it'll be great to kind of reunite with that team uh, and, and work with them again. Uh, so, but no, it looks like a fun show. I've actually have not experienced anything for Extreme Rising. I didn't hear good things when they first started out, but I did hear decent things uh, when they came to town last time. Uh, when they 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 were doing the what I think was formerly the Beaver Golden Dome. I think it might be something different up in Manaka, PA, uh, north of the city here. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're going to be a little more in town at the Irish Center, um, no, just you know the east side of of Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe it's technically where it is. Uh, pretty good lineup here. Uh, we got Stephen Stevie Richards versus Sabu. Always good to see Sabu and hope he doesn't die for the night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rhino, uh, Devin Storm, of course, is the form for uh, Crowbar. Um, we got Blackout, The Hit Squad, Lou Hawks, Rich Ortiz, which you guys informed me is Richie Ar- Ricky Ortiz for the freaking towel from ECW. Yeah, rally towel. Thank you. Oh, no, rally no. towel. Uh, I, I'm so pleased with that now. I'm like, who is this ECW. rich art? Who is this guy? So uh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, this has got to be good. Uh, Facade versus Matt Cross, two friends of the Mayhem that show. Always good. And we just learned earlier, Andrew Palace actually in the uh, dark match for this. So it'll be good to see another familiar face there. Jake Bradley and Papa Don. Am I saying that right? Yes, I, Papa Don. I've heard a good thing about the Papa Don. Yep. Right? <laughs> Please confirm no, that. No, I, I have Don. heard good things about him, though. I've had great. I've heard great things about my Papa Don. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure he's a very nice man. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he's a very nice individual. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Um, Please don't yeah. kill me, Papa Don. Yeah, that's cool. I think um, there's a couple of those like sort of ECW sort of nostalgia shows. I think it's an interesting market that I think well, people are tapping into for uh, indie wrestling. 
But it feels like it's a nice mix. It's not like a straight up reunion thing. It is like a next generation. Yeah, they're trying thing. to they're trying to it's actually sort of be a show and be. I a mean, company. I mean, you got and I think it's smart. And I know we complain about TNA doing this, but they overdo it. But you got your Stevie Richards and you got your Sabu at the top, so your ECW fans are going to show up. I mean, this is like you know what got me into International Wrestling Cartel back when I first started going was we showed up because the names were on there: Sabu, Stevie Richards. In this case, back then it was low key and. And, you know, guys like that. Uh, but we stick around for the other guys, you know. People show up because Sabu's on the card and now they, they discover uh, Matt Cross or, or Facade, right? Or, or any of these mm-hmm. other guys. And hopefully stick around because you're not going to get the... Uh, well, it depends on what you're looking for. I guess we're talking ECW fans here. But you're not going to get the awesome, cool wrestling, which really I think was the foundation in your your Benoits and your Jerichos and your Mary Mysterios and ECW. Um, but you're going to get those from the new young guys coming up. So I think that's mm. going to be pretty cool for that. So I'm looking forward to that and see what the, they have to deliver. A very personal, up-and-close look at what that is but you know i have my opinions there <laughs> ringside i always do uh so that'll be fun that'll be that'll be a nice introduction to the to the group uh and of course that's <laughs> going to be on iPay-per-view. am i right i believe this is being put out yeah it's on the iPay-per-view this weekend uh so go check that out that's uh saturday february 8th uh here in pittsburgh pa and you can check all that out extremerising.com now let's talk about this youtube yes let's talk about the challenge for this week yes uh, this past week's challenge uh I apologize. which if you don't know I I failed, I failed this week's challenge. <laughs> you failed this week's challenge, but, but I did, it's not that I didn't experience any of his matches. That's very true. I just didn't get through the playlist because that's, I that's, did. That's fine. The, 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 the playlist is there for you know just sort of a guide. But you can watch whatever. I, I the, you know, no one no one is limited to the playlist that you can find on youtubecom slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, where yeah, we go. We look at wrestlers and we look at indie wrestlers and we see what we think and and we we develop uh, uh, new connections with uh, indie wrestlers. And this week's past challenge was Drew Gulak, a current CZW heavyweight champion, uh, who recently wrestled uh, at National Pro Wrestling against Colt Cabana mm-hmm. in a two out of three falls match, which I thought was a great match. Definitely one of the top matches of the show. Um, so you did watch some Drew Gulak. I did. Well, uh, well, I, I, I experienced him a year ago, of course, at national, the original National Pro Wrestling Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to say, I wasn't, well, I, I don't know because it was such a long day or what, but I didn't know what I was watching uh, because we mm-hmm. kind of looked up and were like, wow, what are these guys doing? Because it was uh, the uh, Wrestling is Respect promotion. I believe right. they were wrestling for him. And, and of course, this match is uh, with Francis o- O'Rourke. And it was a very... Um, classic wrestling very uh, uh i i guess the best way that a lot of people can put is sort of the british uh catches catch can style okay um, okay they, i didn't know the name for it. but i was just like but again this was um it, it threw me off i i can say yeah. that uh it, it threw me off because we had a day again i think we were talking off show about uh all the the flippy people it seemed like everybody was trying to out flip each other this day uh, yeah. And I felt like the IWC match and uh, this match to a certain point brought something completely different. At the moment, I wasn't into it because I was in flippy mode. Is that? Yeah. I guess we could say that. I was in flippy mode uh, for wrestling. <laughs> and then these guys come out doing these matches and it and it's just slowed down. And it's just like, and, and the pace just kind of, I think, shocked everybody uh, to uh-huh. that point. But but looking back, no, this is this is fun. And, and, and I... And knowing this, I think, match, it's a, I think it's a style that not a lot of any companies do. Actually, no, it's no, still, definitely still not. Very rare um, to see some guys just do what they do like that. But I think Gulak and also O'Rourke are two of those guys that are really sort of representing that style uh, and, in indie wrestling. And I don't think a lot of wrestling fans will appreciate this. Is the problem? Um, yeah. You know the you know the wrestling fans versus fans of wrestling. You know that's that's the one's going to actually. I think a percentage of one's going to take the time for this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but given that, so so knowing this match with O'Rourke last year, uh, going into the Colt Cabana match, I was like, well, how is this going to mix? And it's nice to see that he he's pretty varied between the whole two matches I've seen him in. Um, <laughs> and who knows? I might have seen more and not realized. You know, I have trouble catch up remember we talk about ring of honor and hd net i couldn't <laughs> tell anybody apart from anybody else because they all pretty much look the same same here i can't tell these two guys apart in this match um mm-hmm. 
you know, and that's that's me. I can't, you know, um, everybody's too similar, you know, flippy guys or you know, ground guys <laughs> or whatever in, in in black tights. You know, it's it's it's, it's kind of hard to stick out. Kind of blends in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, car is a little easier. I mean, I can tell that's the green end. That, okay, that's an ice cream. I know that's an ice cream cone. I, I I know I know that's a that's a abominable snowman. You know, I I, I dragon dragon speaks for itself come on <laughs> uh, but no no but no I, I do appreciate this though and, and i thought he had a really good match with uh cole cabana as well very awesome i also encourage you if you do want to go f- further and watch some stuff a lot of his and i couldn't find a lot of full matches of this but um his czw stuff i think is really great uh if you've never seen Ooh, his uh see, highlights. his uh, his campaign for a better combat zone uh is phenomenal and it's one of the things that really changed CZW and sort of shifted it. Um, and it's really phenomenal. And I think uh, Gulak's one of those guys that can do a lot. And and he's one to definitely look out for, in my opinion. Awesome. Awesome. So go check that out. Who do we got this week? This week? Uh, you mentioned you like – I mean, we talk about the flippy guys. I got some flippy guys for you. Oh, um, give me the flippy guys. I got some different-looking t- flippy guys. Um, <laughs> what? What? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. Um, in indie wrestling, you sort of see guys that – I think the big thing is you see guys that you wouldn't see on television. You see guys that you don't expect to see because of their look or because of the way they act or, or the way they wrestle. Um, and that's sort of the appeal to indie wrestling. So I picked tag team, uh, first tag team in the indie wrestling challenge. Okay. Uh, that is uh, making waves all throughout the Midwest. I've actually uh, had the uh, personal privilege to see them once wrestle for ACW in Austin. Um, there are the hooligans, Devin and Mason Cutter. Uh, and if you look at those two, they're they're, they're bearded fellows. They they they're a little they're a little rough. They're a little grunge, but. Uh, they can do some flips, and they they're very agile, and and they're very surprising. Uh, they wrestle predominantly, as I mes- mentioned, in the Midwest. Uh, wrestle for a lot of companies there. Uh, there you see a match they had for uh, Beyond Wrestling against Jonathan Gresham and uh, Davey Vega from one of our past challenges. Uh-huh. Um, they're also uh, they're one of their big matches that's coming up uh, was for uh, is going to be for St. Louis Anarchy, which we talked about when we had Gary J on. Uh, one of those nights, they're going to be wrestling the Young Bucks. And that's going to be a phenomenal matchup because I think it's going to be showing that um, these two guys are two that you should really give opportunity to um, because they can do a lot and they can really, really showcase something you will never see before. Um, So, yeah, um, go check them out. That's uh, Devin and Mason Cutter, the hooligans. Uh, As we mentioned before, there's a playlist on YouTube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show where uh, I picked out a couple matches and some segments featuring the hooligans. Nice. uh, for various promotions against various people, uh, but you are not limited to the playlist. If you see anything involving uh, Devin and Mason Cutter, please watch it. Also, uh, if you want to go the extra mile, buy some DVDs um, and go check them out because uh, they uh, you can, it's any way you can to sort of support indie wrestling. Um, so, and when you do watch that, either email us at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or tweet us at Mayhem Show uh, your thoughts, good, bad, whatever you want. Uh, and what you think about the hooligans and add in on the conversation. We'll read them on the show and uh, go, uh, go get involved. Go get involved in indie wrestling. Awesome. Uh, great, great week. Uh, thanks again, Chess Flex, for joining us. Minus is closed, unfortunately. Uh, so go check him out at Chess Flex or on Twitters and everywhere else. He's Chess Flex or it's not hard. It's not too many other Chess Flexors. It's not like a Smith name. Okay. Don't confuse uh, it with Chess Flex. So go look it up. There's a few videos on YouTube as well. Him and his glorious uh, outfits that we talked about here earlier today. Um, so so thanks a lot to that. Uh, we'll see you guys next week where our guest will be do we have one scheduled yet it will be tbd to be determined <laughs> awesome so the mystery so well, we do have uh to tune in and find out or, or follow us follow us on that mayhem show because i'm sure we will announce it when it happens <laughs> all right we'll see you guys next week watch them indie wrestling huh?